This is the Art of Network Engineering podcast. In this podcast, we'll explore tools, technologies, and talented people. We aim to bring you information to expand your skill sets and toolbox and share the stories of fellow network engineers. Welcome to the Art of Network Engineering podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Weiler. With me, I have Andrew Laptef. That's his name if he's in trouble, but most time it's just Andy because that's what normal people do with their names when they have one that you can short. They shorten it. Hi, Andy. How are you, sir? What up, Aaron? What up, dog? I think we're all pumped up. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, baby. It's just us again. The dynamic duo. So hold we on. need like a superhero team name or like a tag team name. So my name in high school and college was Lap because I was Andy Laptef and okay, everybody's like names had to be like something in the end. Did you have like a nickname? Like- yeah, I, I did. And I don't know that I can say <laughs> Come it. Come on. Um, <laughs> is it a, uh, is it a curse word? Is it fail? No, no, it's... It, it's really weird, actually. All right, I'll give you the backstory. Hold on, I, hold it, on. It, it's, Before it's, you tell me, the reason I bring it up is you yeah. introduced me as Andrew Laptop. So I was, I did, I was Andrew going up. Then I became yeah. Andy, which I never liked because Andy sounded huh. like a little kid's name to me. And when you okay. introduce yourself in sales as "Hi, I'm Mandy," it sounds like Mandy, a girl's name. <laughs> hi, I'm hi, Mandy. I'm Mandy. Okay, look, so, I'm Mandy. So that I, makes sense. I started to dislike my first name in sales, so that that reason. But then in high school and college, I was Lap, and I'm like, oh, Lap's pretty cool. Lap but, is pretty cool. But then I kind of went astray in college and went off the deep end and was a goofball. So I tried to reinvent myself later on, and I was Andrew for a while. <laughs> oh yeah, so you got serious again. So I you, did. You elongated your name, and then I after a year or two of Andrew, I'm like, I'm not Andrew. What is going on, man? So <laughs> who's this guy? I'm back to Andy. <laughs> but there's like people I've met in my life that like knew me as Andrew, and oh, now wow. and they're like, <laughs> I've did you dress different? <laughs> probably i don't you know <laughs> you know you go through like stages in your life and you're like i'm gonna try to reinvent myself or like you yeah. know change things i don't like so yeah i anyway that's why they're like uh <laughs> they're like andy you've changed you're like andy i haven't heard that name around these parts and i don't yeah. know how long what's up andrew i'm like oh yeah we met during 2007 to 2011 you're like okay I play was... it cool this guy knows who i am <laughs> I <was> somebody <laughs> else so i need to know your nickname okay so um you know how it goes, right? Like you're in PE class and everybody's like uh, picking the teams, right? And so is that physical education for those who went to private school? We, yeah, physical education. We just we just PE. called it gym. PE. Gym, yeah, yeah. gym, yeah. PE, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. um, so you know, like in in um, junior year, I had like weightlifting and PE, and like I tried to like group them together so I didn't have any books and like I didn't have to do anything. Basically, it was like it was the total slack off plan, like. I was destined for great things, clearly, from the, from the get-go. <laughs> Although, I, I do remember taking a crap one time at, like, uh, 9.30 a.m. This is great. Because you got to remember, like, you and I went to high school, like, you know, in the 90s, right? Uh-huh. Like, and, and and so I was I was walking to go take a crap because I had gym, <laughs> P.E. in the morning. This is kind of weird. This is actually has nothing to do with the nickname, by the way, which is even more weird. We're about, to go, down a think weird, of this. We're about to go down a weird path because you just reminded me of, like, showers and i Dude, went, and I, okay and i went to an all-boys catholic school i mean things are about oh, to get God. really weird oh yeah 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 <laughs> so 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 i i, I this is the, actually this this story just gets even more beyond strange you know what i mean because um the reason why i even had to go to the bathroom was because <laughs> i i was it was like i had just gotten to school right it was like the first hour like that's what you call it right first hour <laughs> so i was in first hour and I just had to go hit me like a ton of bricks, right? Like it's emergency time. And you know, there's like, there's like very few rules in high school, but one of the rules (laughs) is just don't crap there. Do you know what I mean? Because you're, you're only there for like five hours. Well, for the record, this is our sec, this is your and I's second time doing a pair off with you and I. And we talked about poop. And we talked about poop early on in both of them. So, okay. That's why you're my kind of dude, man. We're already into the poop stories. Well, in our, in our high school, we didn't have doors on our, stall so all boys catholic school no doors what yeah i'm telling you we could get as weird as we want here but this is your story Go that ahead. is that's already weird yeah so <laughs> no i mean the, the only part about me taking a crap well i was lactose intolerant i am lactose intolerant i didn't know it mm. at the time yeah. my mom did though but she had no uh trepidation whatsoever like buying me cereal for breakfast which is like what are you doing to me lady 
Like, you know, I, I go to school every day and I'm like about to explode. And so anyway, I'm on, you know. Well, I'm, it was I'm, a different time, right? Like it I, was, I, it was. I feel like kids, people are a lot more concerned about all things kids now. Like, yeah, gluten. Just, have, yeah. you know, yeah. you just ate what your parents bought in the 90s. And if it hurt your stomach, yeah. tough. <laughs> and there wasn't no soy. It wasn't no like, <laughs> no. Lact- there was some, there was some pills like you could take, but God dang, those things hurt. Like. They just cause the stomach ache. Because look, if there's like a, a if there's a reason why it's making you do that, right? And if you if you suppress the chemical reaction, still happens. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like like I, I'm I started this out by saying like I basically tried to do as little as possible in high school, but <laughs> you know in science I did learn that like hey something's <laughs> there's there, you know there's a, a state change happened right like gas to a liquid type situation <laughs> where uh, the condensation what so uh, so you go to the meant. bathroom and I go to the bathroom and and it was like in this deep crevice of the school which is great because it's the safe haven right like you know what i'm talking about every school had a safe haven and i'm walking to the safe haven and there's a freaking 20 dollar bill on the ground dude it was 1997 like i i can't emphasize like enough how much yeah i can't emphasize enough how much that 20 dollar bill got me because like gas was like less than a dollar what town are right? we in are we in chicago florida uh we we're in we we're in illinois southern right. illinois because so like 20 right bucks 20 Louis. bucks in illinois in the 90s is different than 20 bucks in san diego in the 90s right well yeah for sure <laughs> right. no, i'm yeah. just getting us that grounded was, that in. was minimum wage here <laughs> <in the 90s. laughs> right sorry so, right. it was a lot of money and where you were yeah, it was, it was a lot of money. money but anyway that was that's an actually an unrelated part of the story but that uh i just thought about that because i thought that was so cool to this day i thought Did, that 20 bucks was the, hey sometimes you just need to be more like me think finding 20 dollars is right. freaking rad because it is right I, I like think, enjoy that 20 bucks I think I just figured out your nickname. There was no toilet paper. You wipe with the 20 and your boys called you money wipe for the rest of high school. Wow, <laughs> dude, that's actually genius. Thank no, I, I didn't tell anybody that I went to the bathroom. Therefore, I couldn't tell them how I found the 20 bucks. So up until like, I don't know, now it's been a complete mystery. But no, so you're doing the thing where you pick teams, you know, and you're like, I got this dude or I got I got this lady or I got I got this this cat. And it, it got to me and it was these kids that were like, uh, I think they're a year older than me because they would do junior, senior PE, right? So it was always freshmen by themselves, sophomore by themselves, then junior, senior PE. So I was a junior. These guys were seniors. And uh, the guy just looks at me and he points. And it was this group of friends. Like they were just, they kind of knew who I was. Like they knew I was like a bit goofy. But they, he pointed right at me and the teacher's standing right there and he goes, I got hot buttery nipples over here. <laughs> And uh, so, and yeah, for some that reason was... it fits. I, I can see that. Like, I don't know why. Yeah, no, I don't I, even know what it, it never... means. But... No, me neither. <laughs> it fits I mean, for it some turns, reason. It, it, it's like a drink, right? Like you can get a hot buttery nipple. Like I think it's a shot somewhere. Like, you know what I mean? Like a, a mixed drink. Yeah, but do you um, think like 17-year-old PE high school kid knew that that was like, all right. You just... <laughs> so no, hold on, I... hold on. So did you carry yourself with the same kind of confidence and air that you carry yourself today like was he going for that like this dude just walks and talks like he's the man no No? not at all i mean well (laughs) also thanks for thinking that i have this like air of confidence it's more just like blissful ignorance (laughs) right which is what which is what it was at the time it's completely oblivious that people are probably laughing at me and not with me you know what i mean like i'm just like i don't care i I guess i just didn't care but it was a wonderful it went over it is a wonderful to not care yeah, right um it went over very well right so oh basically God. it was a hit immediate hit right like everybody had the reaction that you did that's did. a long nickname hot butter nipples well they started calling me hbn that's what i was gonna ask yeah okay or hb they would call me or they'd call me buttery <laughs> like the dudes would see me in the hallway they'd be like what up buttery and so it it'd be funny because like they'd be like they'd be like buttery nips or like hot and buttery like they call me hot and buttery uh. like all the time and i thought it was i, I this is the first time i've actually thought about this in like a really long time and it's actually it's, it's actually a great me laugh. Name. it really is so <laughs> it the best is that there's zero context right even when you tell the story there's no context like, but like wait, or a legitimate context but wait what did the pooping have to do with hot nipples no nah, the that- pooping thing just made me think of when i was in gym class and i like all uh, right, I, right, right. You know okay. what I mean? Because I, yeah. I was in gym class when this all I was, was waiting for the callback of like, and that's... No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah. 
<laughs> no, HBN. No, can you guys imagine like if social media existed back then? Like uh, my my handle, like I would have I would have screwed myself for life because I would have made myself hot buttery nipples on everything and like I would have never gotten a job. Like, thank God that social media didn't exist when we were coming up. That like dude. YouTube didn't exist. Like mm-hmm. the last thing I needed were like all these embarrassing life events because you know oh. a, a young kid who doesn't give a crap. I mean, no, you know, you're you're overconfident, you're cocky, you're goofy, you don't care. Like I do not need those kind of things from that time of my life documented. Y- yeah, in exactly. You don't like, need nah. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't need to be in the Library of Congress, right? Yeah. Like I'm gl- I'm I'm, I'm glad that you and the listeners don't know a hell of a whole lot about me certain points in my life like same this is yeah, who same. i am i'm a network guy here we go yay you don't need to know here we go, yay. <laughs> well the- well i want i want it because like you know this this us being in this industry i think is you know it's not strange but it's more it's more kind of unique in the fact that it didn't really exist to the extent that it did back then so the fact that we're both even here is just kind of weird to begin yeah. with you know what i mean right um but I wanted to ask because uh, we were we've been polling the Discord server and just kind of pinging folks around, just saying like, "Hey, what would you guys like to listen to?" And I don't think poop jokes was one of the things, but you know what? <laughs> it should. When be. you get just, it should be. And when you get just us two, guess what? <laughs> That's what you're gonna get. <laughs> That's what you're gonna get. So when 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 Dan and AJ are feeling under the weather, you're gonna get. <laughs> Poopy lap yeah. and poopy hot buttery whatever. The hot buttery nipples, baby. <laughs> like, oh man, just how I'm, it goes. Not, I'm I'm never gonna not not get away from that now. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I do too. It's funny. Does, wait. Does your uh, wife know about this nickname? You know what? I don't think so. I was just <laughs> thinking that, like, when you said, I don't think so. So, so. so does she listen to the show? Because my wife doesn't. Uh, periodically, okay. yeah. Like, and my dad actually did once too, and nice. he was like, "I have no freaking idea what you guys are talking." I about. I have a lot of people in my life that listen to every episode. People that aren't technical, old, young, whatever. But really, I cannot, I cannot get my wife to listen. And she, I think she only listens if she knows that like something got mentioned about her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's like that. She's like, "Well, oh, what are you guys, what are you guys talking about?" <laughs> well, we're talking about her now. Maybe we'll talking get her about to, her now. Yeah, we we're we need. About her now. We need another download. We just hit. Should we announce our our big uh, our big number we just hit this month? Yeah, go for this it. This is man. usually AJ's territory of wins and yeah, stats and really all that. Is. He tracks all that. This is his baby. Yeah. But I believe the month of March, twenty twenty one. When did we start? July. What's that? August, September, 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 June. March. No, June. We've done this what eight nine months something like that. Yeah, something like that. So March this past month is the first month that we hit 10,000 plus downloads in a month, which is, you know, amazing to me. So it's like an average of like whatever, 2,500 downloads an episode for the four episodes. Crazy. Yeah. So just shout out to people listening. And, you know, I I mean, obviously we want more people to listen because we love the show and we love the feedback, but we haven't done anything out of the ordinary. No. No for that to happen so it just personally it feels really cool that like this is some organic thing happening like we're not paying facebook ads we're not doing all this master plan linking in with other podcasts like it's so anyway that that felt really good when aj told us that yesterday like wow ten thousand. well you know and and i appreciate people taking an hour out of their week you know because that's precious time i know people have families and stuff i think i think we have a really good podcast for like Cause, cause like when I'm, uh, if I'm like studying or something, I like to have like, you know, like the lo-fi, like chill hop thing kind of going on in the background. Mm. I, you know, like, let's say you were at work or something. Like, I think it's a cool thing to kind of have on in the background because it's topical and you know, there's a, we've obviously had a lot of cool people on here too. Like, so shout out to all of them. Yeah, like, that man, the list is like insane. And the amount of people that we've had, I feel like, right. uh, it, it, and they've been able to share their stories too, along with the website, you know, and all the faces of the journey stuff that Tim does and all the contributions from like Gerard and folks like that. Like, it's just, it's just like, it, it's turned into something like, and I think it's turned into something because of it's the sum of its parts. You know, I think people see a lot of themselves in us, which I, I hope they do because we are them, right? And I think the one thing that that maybe folks don't see that is good to bring up is, you know, we do this because we care. And I know that sounds wholesome and, you know, very like Mr. Rogersy, but I just realized people might not even know who Mr. <laughs> Rogers is. 
We'll put but, it. Hey, we'll, we'll, put it <laughs> we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, we'll link. We'll link it to Mister Rogers. Hi neighbor. Uh, hi neighbor. Um, yeah, I, I don't think people realize that you know we also take a week out of our or, a, or an hour out of our week, often more, yeah. to do this. Uh, you know, and I'm not including you know, you or myself doing any like audio editing, video editing, and then all of the, the social keeping up with that AJ does. And, you know, it's just like, there's a ton of work that goes into this. And, you know, I, I just want people to understand that we're doing it not for anything. We're doing it because like, we hope that folks can relate and, you know, again, picture themselves in our positions and, you know, I encourage anyone else, just like I did with the the blog thing very early on, like start a podcast, y'all. I you, mean, I'll listen. You know what's cool too is I love doing this show. Yeah, same. And there's a lot of other things I do in my life on a daily basis I don't necessarily love. I'm just doing things. <laughs> you know, so yeah, like it is a lot of work and it takes a lot of time sometimes, but yeah. I love this. Like I had a hell of a day today. I've been super busy. The kids are home, blah, blah, blah. I got a sinus infection, just getting antibiotics. I mean, I'm not at my best, but- I right. really look forward to like, yeah, we're going to get on, we're going to kick it. And, you know, so yeah, it's, 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 um, my wife said the other day, like, do you think more people are listening to podcasts this past year? Because like everybody's stuck at oh. home and yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe, you know, I'm not maybe. saying that's behind like our growth, but, um, I know I've been that listening be to true. more, I'm just, you know, you're around the house. I usually listen, like walking the dog, doing the dishes, yeah. like yeah, kind of Go passive, that's yeah, huge. like, yeah. That's kind of what I was saying, right? Like, you know, something that's in the background, just like ambient noise, like, you know, that it doesn't like there are subjects like I caught myself kind of halfway through that, too, because th there were some episodes that we had where like, OK, so like Brittany, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. She's a recruiter. Like that was kind of one where it was like, OK, hold up. I, I might need to take notes during this. You know what I mean? Right. Or or some or some folks like Keith, like where, you know, they're kind of giving like their their tidbits of, of how they would do it or, you know what I mean? Just like gems or morsels, I guess, that you could find in those those different. Here's another thing to mention to like people listening who, like you said, like start a podcast, write a blog. Like, yeah, this was a happy accident. Yeah. You know, it, we yeah. just, we met online. We started a study group. AJ said, you want to try this thing? There really isn't this master plan of, you know, I don't know, call it what you will, like luck, synergy, fate, whatever. And, but yeah, there's for, no end game, right? There's no like, hey, we're trying to quit our jobs and just do this full time. There's no like, like hey, we want us, we want us a, a sponsor to pay for everything. There's none of that. It's just like, let's try to help. Yeah. So you never know, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, I had no idea when I said yes to this that we'd be having this much fun and I'd have, I mean, this is, I don't want to call it a hobby, but like, I really enjoy doing this and I really enjoy yeah, the feedback. Same. And so I didn't mean to step on you. You were getting into the topic and I was just thinking of AJ's announcement. Oh, section. well, no, it was actually a good segue. Cause like you were talking about, and there were some wins too. Obviously AJ's way more in tune with that. I know some folks, uh, Oh, I think, uh, somebody got a job. Casey Vivaldi, I think is his name in the discord channel. Casey yeah. He, yeah. Just, he just became a trainer at an ISP, right? He did, which is a big, uh, big step up for him. It's awesome. And then Tanaya, she got a job at, at ISP as well. Like she did. shout outs. Yeah. Dude. I don't know. She's of been course, looking for a while. So, and you know, and they both deserve it. Like we know them from totally, you know, totally from talking on, on the side and stuff, but they're, they, totally. work, they work hard. They know their stuff. And it's so nice to see people, you know, that deserve, you know, a step up promotion, whatever you want to call it, a new job. Get and it's it. funny because it, it just, it, it's almost like, like you, you see the folks that are asking the questions, right? Like, and, and y'all, if you haven't been on our discord server, please come in. It's, it's such a welcome opening. Like I see when folks enter the chat and like the warm welcome they get just by saying hi and introducing themselves. Like that's not typical. Because I've been at other places and I'm like, I am never saying a freaking word. These dudes are going to jump I was just going to say that. Even the Discord server, which again, is just this free resource, a community of people. Like I've heard a bunch yeah. of people like, yeah, I kind of was over at this other networking Discord server for a while and it kind of got a little weird and I got out of there, but <laughs> it got weird. Yeah. You know, whatever. Like I'm not talking trash on anybody, but like just all yeah, the feedback yeah. we get is like, this is a great place. It's safe. People are helpful. There's no nonsense. Like, and again, that's a happy accident. We don't really like... We have right. some rules we try to, you know, if you're in there asking for yeah, money. Yeah, be cool. Yeah, but people have been pretty yeah. cool, which is just another kind of nice little happy accident. Like, I don't I know, know how this has all happened and come together, but, you know, 
AJ started it. Here we are, and it's, it's been it's been pretty sweet. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, and again, yeah, like you said, it's just a byproduct of like just people just being cool. Honestly, uh, we have like our our uh, prison guard slash wizard slash vizier <laughs> slash you know network engineer Carl kind of hovering in every channel <laughs> helping people left through. I don't know where that guy finds the time to do. I just don't. But he's got he's got two he's got two cents for every single thing you could bring up and it's amazing it's a and it's a and it's not crap right like i have crap for everything like i'll I'll comment on everything and it's in half the time it's just crap (laughs) carl but him he's a wealth of knowledge taylor comes to mind too the in the lab taylor in the lab channel like i was in there the other day whining about something and they just you know quickly jumped right in started helping me giving me all kinds of good ideas I was just trying to get a couple CSRs and Eve to pull a DHCP address and, you know, they just jumped right in. And I mean, this is after like, yeah. Aaron, like an hour and a half, I can't get an IP on an interface. You like, just popped into the Discord channel, right? Yeah. I'm like, what am why, I why doing not? wrong here? And within like two minutes that you just reminded me, um, Carl and, and uh, Taylor jumped Taylor. right on. Like, yo, yeah. dude, check this, check this. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Taylor's the server guy. So he's telling me to check the vSwitch security. Carl's like, you know, doing the... You know, Firewall uh, troubleshooting. Check, yeah, yeah, just you know, right, just right, take right. it down the stack, check your interface, whatever. As it turned out, I had my Edge CSR that was connected to the cloud that is connected to my you know LAN to pull the DHCP. <laughs> I configured the wrong interface on the CSR, so Giggy Two uh, is connected to the NAT cloud, oh, and I kept fighting Giggy One. But this was like an hour and twenty minutes of like, why is it sometimes do- I'm doing DHCP layer one, bro. debugs? It was like. Just stupid. I On an emulator. See, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it in the draw. It said Giggy 2 in the drawing, but, and that happens a lot, like with troubleshooting. I feel like everybody says, keep it simple, have a structured approach. It's so hard though. I always go like, well, because it can't be the interface. I'm not an idiot. Right. No, I know what you mean. I, I mean, that's what I my mean. mind tells me. And then I'm jumping in all this deeper stuff. Like what's going you know, on? I'm, I'm debugging DHCP and do I need an IP helper address? All this nonsense. <laughs> Which is the same crap I did in the T-shirt exam three times and failed. Like if I just had a structured Dude, easy, so that's something I'm working on is like just a structured troubleshooting approach that when I get a call, like this is what well, I hold on then that. because that brings up a good question because okay, like going back into your career, you worked you worked at a knock and you know you do less like break fix, but now but before it was that's all you did right you guys had tickets they came in and, and somebody had access asked us this in the in the discord server when you when you were talking about topics so i think it's actually a good segue so so you're saying like hey you, like because just now right now you're saying i need to and i just want to make this very clear so i'm gonna i'm gonna reset the scene here yeah. so andy or andrew depends on when you met him call me lap um <laughs> lap <laughs> the lap meister <laughs> so at one point, you worked in a knock. Your whole job was to troubleshoot. Yeah. Your whole job was to figure out problems and it fix them. And back Yet, up, back up a step from that. Cable guy. Okay. Cable guy. All troubleshooting. Dude, all I troubleshooting. was so good at troubleshooting. Like, one, uh, yeah, for a couple sure. years in the beginning, I stunk at everything. But you know, mm-hmm. and, and the art of network engineering, right? Like the art of troubleshooting. When you yeah. w- when you look at the ticket on the way there, and you yep. almost get this. You start thinking. Yeah, and you can almost get this intuitive sense, like, all right, I see the problem. There's water having. in the drop. I see it's exact. Yeah, water in the drop. Yep. Squirrel chew. There's a suck out somewhere, or like yep. the phone keeps going out. All right, there's a short. I got to pull everything off yep. and start checking lines. And like, yeah. So there's that art that I think just comes with experience and seeing it enough. I times. would agree. And, and and so I know we're about to jump in the knock in the rest of my career, but like in my no, job, it's part of it. In my job now, I don't feel like I have enough experience on these big to me, overwhelming systems and networks and global blah, blah, blah. Like, there's so many different pieces of it. You know, cable, you, you knew what it was, right? It was always coax. It was low end, high right. end. It was water. It was squirrel chew, pull out. Like, you, yeah. kn- you knew the six or seven things to check for at every job. You know, replace the drop. It's probably going to fix 80% of your problems. Nobody it does, wants- actually. The statistics say is 85%. Okay, yeah. Well, when I yeah. So I had a guy that trained me coming up, and he replaced every drop at every house, and he had phenomenal yeah. numbers. As soon as I started did. doing that, I mean, that's how I had like a 3.7% repeat rate because I replaced every drop at every house when I didn't see the new hang hook things that they had when it was the old. 
the drop hanger yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they, when they, they just have... did the uh the wagon wheel right exactly and the drop hangers were out for five years when i started so i knew that drop yep. was at least five years old Same. probably longer and you go up there it's dry rotted the uh, braids exposed i mean this is getting cable nerd but, but... But, but yeah but basic stuff though right like it's like hey you, you like you start to think like and i'm guessing that when you got to the knock you know you had a reintroduction just like you did day one where you were like oh crap i'm in over my head here but you would see similar tickets start to come across right so like i think that a lot of people when they first start somewhere like it's extremely overwhelming because you don't know and there's no amount of schooling or certifications that you can do to prepare you for any specific job unless like you were honestly actually i don't know unless you're like a, a, a car mechanic or because even a doctor they make you do like a residency and stuff because that's basically them giving you a job without the full responsibility. Right. And being a doctor is just troubleshooting too, and, right? It's the yeah. same thing. And not only do you not know when you start, but you're surrounded by people who do know. <laughs> Good old-fashioned imposter syndrome. <laughs> It'd be emotionally more palatable if you were surrounded by people who didn't know too. And you're all like, Dirt, yeah, I don't know, right. let's figure this out. But yeah, you walk yeah, well, in, I mean, even as a cable guy, like- all these people knew what was going on. And I'm like, oh my God, dude. Like, uh, you know, I spent three months in school and I still don't know what I'm doing. Like, you know. Yeah, so. I'm spending four hours on this job trying to figure out what's going on when all I needed to do was replace the drop and I could have been done in 15 minutes. Yeah. 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 Now, we've all been there, but smarter, not harder, right? Is what they say. But you can't get the smarter part until you, honestly, most of the time it's when you screw it up. Right. right. Like then then you're like, ah, well, never doing that again. Right. Yeah. And, um, and you know what day to day a cable looked like. And we've talked about that. And and knock yeah. day to day wasn't all that different from the field. It was just I was. Sitting- so how hard is it? Just give me yeah. a. And I, I've never worked in a knock mm-hmm. the, on a scale of one to ten. So you start out as, as knock engineer one. Right. So how many tiers were there? Was it three, four? Was there like a senior guy? Yeah. Is that there, that loose kind of, I guess? There were a few tiers, not a ton of tiers. Um, it, yeah. it was very so like. You almost needed a CCIE to get tier two. Like I was tier one. Like it, oh, wow. it, they didn't want to pay anybody is, okay. is what it was. So, okay. you know, you needed, they had a whole thing. Like you needed a CCMP. You needed five years experience. You needed like two Juniper professional certs. They had a whole thing. Now, if you have all those things and you could gonna, be beyond what they were going to give yeah, you. Yeah. Like anyway. they're going to yeah. pay, you right. know, less than 60 grand for all that. And like, yo, bro, oh, yeah. like, no. You can make six figures with that out in the real world. Like, what are we doing? You can double here? that, so, right? Yeah, but totally. there was people there sitting, busting their butts, trying to climb this ladder that just seemed way too steep for, you know, for what you were getting. But to answer your question, how difficult was it? I mean, it was difficult getting in the knock. It was difficult working in there because I didn't know what was going on. And each shift yeah, had their so, own, like, sim- you know, each shift was a whole different job. So it was. It, yeah, 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 and I'm yeah, a whole set, a different set of people, different supervisor, manager, whatever. You're doing different that, things. Like different, at, you're doing different things at night than yeah, you are during the day. Nobody touch anything during the day. Yeah. yeah, but night, yeah. you're just dropping configs and engineers road all night. You don't know how they work, what they're doing, and when you break stuff, you're trying to figure it out. And all right, so okay, so so then as a as a knock one like entry level knock dude, you were responsible for what? So tick the give edge. us like a day, like give us like an average day. So like sure, a ticket comes in. The average like, what day. What does that look like? What does a ticket look like? What what the hell's a ticket? <laughs> so, what, 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 what explain that? So you walk in and there's a handoff, which is a Microsoft Word document with thirty or forty active tickets in the queue being worked. So before okay. anything new breaks, you know, the lead. You got to get those first. Yeah, the lead would assign you, you know, 10 tickets. So you got to follow up okay. on all these. Or you walk in and there's a big old outage happening with 50 people on a bridge. Hey, guess what? You get okay. to jump on this. This is what you're doing right now. Hmm. Um, so, you know, you'd walk in, you'd either be jumping on a bridge for somebody taking over on the, in the handoff, or, you know, you, you get those 10 or 15 tickets. You got to start looking at those. But we were responsible for the edge. Monsoor that we had on the show, yeah, he was the core guy. He was inside. He was making all that MPLS magic, you know, happen. We were okay. at, we were at the edge, so we were at the you know an edge router that went out to a cell tower. Basically, we did like cell backhaul, the backhaul, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know, you got a couple so, miles so, so, of fiber. So, out so to if a anybody switch. doesn't know what that is, I'll just kind of explain that real yeah, quick. Yeah. So, so the cell phone towers that you're using, they all obviously somehow connect back to the internet shocker most of the time it's it's one of your favorite isps whoever's local most of the time so even 
a Verizon AT&T Tower, whatever, T-Mobile, doesn't matter, could be going back to Spectrum, right? Yeah. Um, they would terminate it uh, at Colos, like, or MSCs, rather, like back at... Right, yeah, so a carrier yeah. hotel or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. So, okay, so so that you, you're you responsible for that last little, last mile, right? You're the last mile guy. So... Last mile of both sides, by the way. So the last mile that goes from the Comcast network out to their switching center where all their switches are that connect all those calls, like old Ma Bell, so like a, yeah, you yeah. Know, a, a CO. And then also yeah. the other end of the last mile, which is from the other side of Comcast network out to the cell tower. You know, these, yeah. the, the telcos, you know, build all the network out, you know, years ago with copper. But then when they wanted to do all the cell tower stuff, they're like, well, geez, do we want to pull fiber all over the world? Like, well, we got telco that has this stuff pulled and run along every highway and railroad anyway. So yep. can we just pay them for last mile? And that's what they did. So we'd, right. we'd run Smart. a fiber out. They put a switch out at the tower. And so we're watching Spectrum. If the cell tower, you know, if it goes down, we get an alarm. We got to start working that. Okay, so that's a ticket. So yep. so an alarm goes off somewhere. Who generates a ticket? Where does it come from? Us, the the people sitting at the knock. So you're watching Spectrum. Ah. And when an alarm comes in, it usually had the name of the cell tower on it. Um, okay. What what I would usually do first is go to the upstream router and just take a look and see what's happening. Because sometimes it was one way traffic and you would just have to ba- like bounce auto neg or sometimes you're like, uh, I was going to say, re- yeah, yeah. you know, if you're receiving light, but it's down, that's a different thing. Like, well, how am I getting light? And, you know, sometimes it was a one way fiber cut where the send was b- busted, but the return was, you know, like come like different little tricks. But, you know, you get a you get a spectrum alarm, you start a ticket, you call them and say, hey, I got something going on. And, you know. You dispatch a tech if you need to, and so you have read. I'm guessing just like read only access to these edge routers, right? Nah, we had so, uh, we had God rights full, them. yeah, because oh, we so we grief. managed them. It was a fully managed solution, so we would. Oh, okay, there was an Ethernet port we'd hand off to them, and then they'd plug into their yeah. equipment at the at the cell tower. Got it, yeah, got yeah. it, got it. So so then a typical because you just had an alarm goes off like on on those last miles or whatever. Is that a typical like? The majority of the tickets were just like, hey, this is the alarm. What would you say is like the most common? I know it sucks yeah, no, to say this, but like stuff going down, right? Like at a knock, your brake fix and you're just looking. There's two levels. There's stuff that's hard down. And that's easy ish. Like, oh, okay. Now it's not easy. A cut, storm. It's not easy whatever. when somebody hits a 200 pair count with a backhoe and now i mean i mean have the, the, finding the cell- problem is easy well, fixing right. it <laughs> you got, not, not so much you got yeah. 500 cell towers down like an entire city's oh. down and oh. they thought they were diverse paths and they weren't and dude is that nerve-wracking for you though knowing that you're un- the one responsible unnecessarily nerve-wracking because well, what do you mean unnecessarily though because it takes 14 to 16 hours from the time that happens until the time they're splicing fibers so oh, it takes God. it takes or maybe to the resolution. It's been a while, my but it takes yeah, I a think long that's, I think time. That's MTTR, yeah, uh, you got they got to send somebody out. They see what happened. They see what's broken. They got to stop traffic. I mean, you know, get a plan together. There's just, yeah, there's yeah. A, and they got to get a fiber truck out there. They might have to pull new fiber. It's uh, it takes a very long time for like a big old fiber cut with a lot of pairs. At least it did then. Sure. So the unfairly stressful or however I put it was because management was up your gig. If you were working that ticket and all that stuff was down, like they want you to call the fiber company and escalate every 15 minutes. Yeah, that's annoying. Every 15 minutes for 14 hours. Like, like dude, the guy's working his ass off. Like, it's like, like don't you feel weird like yeah. calling him and being like, hey, bro, you done yet? It like, was dude, the worst part of the job. Yeah. And it, maybe oh. that's just a culture thing, but you know, we got to yeah. get it up. We got to get it up. I understand that. I know what you're paying me for. I'm sitting right. in here. The towers are still down. I can't repair the fiber. And we're paying yeah. this company all this money. I didn't hire the company we dispatched out. Like, right. if you guys want to get somebody faster, go ahead. So, you know, it's just kind of uh, yeah. how it goes. Crap rolls downhill. You're at the bottom of the barrel. And so that was the worst part. The other kind so that's of- that's stressful, though. It was stressful, especially for the amount of money. At the time, you mm-hmm. know, it was a small raise from the field. But okay. I had a long game in mind. I wasn't going to be there forever. I needed a job with network engineer in the title that leveraged my CCNA. Nice. Right. So I put up with that for a couple of years and it was, I don't mean to beat it up. I mean, it's, you know, me and Comcast, it's, it was a yeah. great experience. I wouldn't be where I'm at without it. I'm super duper sure. grateful for the opportunity they gave me. The other thing no. is just, you know, if it's slow and stuff isn't down, we had all these SLA tools to check it, you know, is there frame losses or packet losses or jitter. So we, okay. we had this Got board. It. Somebody mentioned in Discord like tools. So at Comcast, we had this tool called Bricks, B-R-I-X. 
And at every site, I don't know if it's every site, wherever it is, they would install these boxes and they were somehow doing, I don't know if they were hellos or it, it was constantly checking the health of the link. And then report back Got to it. this tool. If you had a blue dot, you were good. If they were other colors, you know, you had to check. Might be a dirty fiber, might be a kinked fiber. It doesn't sound like, like I'll be honest, you, you kind of make it sound like it's really not that difficult. And I'm sure it's super stressful, right? Like, so how many of these tickets are you doing a day then? Like, uh, is there a lot of sitting around? It depends on the shift. Um, you know, during the day, the phone rings nonstop all day. Okay. Because and it rings though, but you're saying like, cause you, you're, cause you said you guys were looking at tools, right? Yep. And well, the, the, like, the, obviously if the calls aren't good, alarms, people are calling because <laughs> people are happy. Yeah, but yeah. that's what I'm getting at. Right. So you, you have an alarm system and then you also have an SLA tool that's checking impairments, not hard downs. The, yeah. the alarms were for hard downs. Right. Yep. And so you're getting the alarms and like, okay, so there's no alarms coming in and then there's no, none of your SLA tools are triggering anything wild. Who is calling you? They're Knox. So Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon. Uh, okay. We we the the interaction was between us and them. So Verizon Wireless was so good, is so good. Every single cell tower has um, backup power. Every mm. single one of them. So we had these Sienna switches we were using would tell it would send you. There's a battery in it, and it would send you this trap saying it lost power. Well, that's pretty sweet. It tells you right. what happened before it went down. Sure. Yay. Sure. Dispatch tech, check power, whatever. That never happened on Verizon Towers because they had battery backups at every single one. But like Verizon Wireless is the only carrier that would call in to us. A lot of times they would call us and report a problem before we knew about it, which was pretty huh. interesting. They'd be like, yo, I'm having a problem. And then I'd look up. And as I'd look up at the board, the alarm would pop up. I'm like, how are you guys? So they're just... Vi- their people were professional. They were smart. They were on the ball, like out of all the telcos that I work with. So that's usually who we interacted with was, was their not Got guys. it. That makes sense. Yeah. So I, I guess like maybe too, I'm wondering like, okay, so like when you get there and you're, and you're a new guy, like how is it they, they sort of warm you up to the situation? Do they, do they, cause I'm, th- I'm thinking as if like I'm, well, I am, I sit in our discord server, right? Yeah. Like, and I'm like, Hey, I see a lot of these knock jobs out there, right? It's a great job. It's a great job. Okay, good. I'm glad you said that because, you know, I think a tendency just, this is just for humans in general is to like, it's just always tell people how awful things are. You know what I mean? But like, come on guys, it's it's a job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're not sitting on the beach drinking a Mai Tai. So just get that out of your head already. Like when I had that, it's all about perspective too. When I was in the field and beating up my body, even the cable guy, before I was a cable guy, I was cleaning grease traps. Right, right. <laughs> I had a bachelor's yeah. degree and I'm cleaning grease traps for $11 an hour. You know, yeah. yay for communications bachelors like you. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. So when I got the cable guy job, it was awesome. I'm like, yeah, Comcast is a great company. I'm going to learn a ton. And I did. Right, right, right. You right. know, you, we've talked about this. You max out. You're, so when my body was getting beat up and CCNA and da 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 da, then I got the knock job and I'm like, yeah. So right, I could sit here and say, "Oh, the knock, whatever." But each time I got that job, it was it was badass. It was yeah. badass, dude. When I got a con- when, champagne when I- and all that, dude. Yeah, when I got it, I got network engineer in my title at the knock. I'm like, uh, "Yo, yeah. bro, like I'm an engineer now. I can't multiply." <laughs> but like, I can't. <laughs> so so yeah, it, great great job. Especially like you reminded me of the Discord folks who are like looking for their first gig. We talked about like cable guy. Great job to get an intro into yep. tech. Help desk, bunch of people, great job. If you can get into a knock, great job. Because you get to touch so much technology and so many different I guess things. Like, you know, and that's all that's perfect too. And I I guess like maybe my point is that like the fact that you can pick all those different technology or like in the knock, there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of stuff, right? So I think in that regard, and I, I I'm projecting a little bit because you know, this is how I would feel. Cause I am in that situation. I've never been in. A, I've never worked in a knock, and I, I've been in a hundred knocks. Right. You know, I've been in carry hotels and all that stuff. I've been, you know, COs, you name it. But I, I've never had that experience. So I guess from the outside looking in, I'm trying to get like more detail, and I, and I'm I'm trying not to be scared by the amount of responsibility, right? Like That's I do want responsibility. Part. That's the scary. It is. Part. It, there, there's it, not a I, huge it, difference you, between a cable guy. And a knock guy. You're both break fix. Yeah. People are and calling. A lot you. of stuff is riding on your shoulder. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
stuff is broken. You better go fix it. And if you don't, people guy. are going to be pissed. And now we're going to be after you because why didn't you fix the guy's cable or why didn't you fix the guy's cell tower? So yeah, it's and yeah, the knock was more responsibility than you know the cable guy. It was one house. Well, now I'm working on a cell tower that feeds 450 people in a community. Like so, it, it gets and the money's bigger and the stress is definitely higher. Yeah, and I, I think maybe like where I was kind of going with it is like okay, from the outside looking in, like let's say I'm day one, I'm applying for knock jobs, knocks where I want to go, or that's where all the jobs are. And right. like you did, it's like I think it's a good stepping stone because I I think you're right there. And so I guess maybe I'm trying to get more details on like what the the onboarding experience is like because there is a lot of stuff you have to know, and you can't learn any of that from a CCNA book. And because uh, to be honest, the CCNA doesn't teach you anything about wide area networks anyway, I, right? Yeah. Like uh, they they might breathe about it for like half a second, but that's not the idea. I mean, you need to know all that other stuff before you get into WAN. That's kind of an important deal. But but I guess maybe on, s- since it, no matter where you came from, it could be overwhelming, and it's a lot of tools. You know, you just named off a few, and people were asking us like, "Hey, what are some of the tools and stuff?" So I guess maybe like give us an idea then, like like day one they they. It's your first day that you got to sit there. They don't just give you a bunch of tickets, right? They, right. They, there's like a process. And I'm not saying it's the same everywhere, right? It, there's no way it is. But I guess maybe a general idea, like, because you've there's varying levels of people that get these jobs, right? And this is any job. I'm not picking on the knock in particular. What I mean is like, like, and I'm, I'll toot your horn a little bit here. Not everybody's as smart as Andy. Okay, right? Wait a minute. But also, is everybody's that, not that, as stupid as Andy either. <laughs> Nine months in, and that might be the first compliment I receive from <laughs> from warm, buttery nipples. <laughs> it's hot, buttery nipples. Hot, buttery. Oh, oh hot. Sorry. H- H- yeah, they're hot and buttery, baby. That's how you melt butter. Um, so go ahead. Go, so, go back and toot no, my horn. So, I, mi- so, I missed it. Can you say that again? My, my microphone. Yeah, <laughs> not everybody's as smart. All right, let's do a little ASMR here. Um, <laughs> not everybody is as smart as Andy. Andy Laptev. Lap, lap, lap. And, lap, and I'll lap, be lap. I'll be the first guy to, you know, uh self deprecate and, and say that I'm not I that. know. But but I know, but that that, that that's that, it's usually not true either. So uh, basically what I'm getting yeah. at is okay, so let's say let's just say you're you're right in the middle of the road, Andy. You that's you know probably, not more than anybody, but yeah. Okay. So so slightly not, higher than average is what I could confidently say. Like the fifty second percentile. Yeah, you know, I know, I know my IQ. It's above average. It's not awesome, but yeah. it's, you know, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not a caged animal. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so not anymore. So then they yeah, not anymore. So they give you they give you a onboarding experience. What's the onboarding experience like? Is it is it they mentor you with somebody? Do you guys troubleshoot to get together? Do they give you a list of tools? Tell you to go Google stuff? Like what's that? What's that look like? So before I give you that answer, I just want to tell you that I'm thinking of Cable Guy. So I'm looking at my tech career. Cable Guy, Knock, you know, yeah. building networks for clients and then building and managing data center networks. Yeah. And I think that what's... So the onboarding is similar for each of them, which we'll talk about in a second. But mm. I think the biggest thing I could tell somebody is that the mental game is the most important and the hardest part of it because you do feel like- What do you mean by that? Handling stress, handling okay. imposter syndrome, okay, handling anxiety, um, feelings of inadequacy. Like, so every time you reach, right? Mm-hmm. You know, if you just stay, again, we talked about it. I know guys who were cable guys for 30 years, they were happy with it. They're not reaching. They're not- right. So- They're not stretching themselves, right? They're not building muscle. Yes, they're just going, you know, exactly. They're, they're, they're like you said before, they're lifting that five pound weight and they're like, look at me, I did a hundred reps, you know? So yep, yep. Every, every time you reach and maybe it's a personality thing, but I, I, I've always wanted more for myself or my family, blah, blah, blah. You know, let me, yeah. where is my ceiling? How smart am I? Like, let me keep pushing right. until I like, oh, wow, that's okay. I can't do that. That's a good mentality to have. Well, you know, so I, so what I mean by the mental game is when I started as a cable guy, they set me on my first job and it was a phone problem and I didn't know how to fix it. Mm. And I called my boss and she was like, dude, you just spent three months in class. Fix it or you don't belong here and hung up on me. Whoa. Yeah. Like my first or second week on the job. So, Holy crap. right now 
I needed the job. I wanted the job. They just invested three months in me. I'm in the field. All they yeah. taught me was how to do bumblebees and Christmas trees into a little four pin Jackie thing. Like how to install dial tone to a house, not right. how to find a short. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what was happening. And I didn't know how. So the mental game of when she hung up on me, I thought, wow, I really am out of my league. Maybe I should be cleaning grease traps. Maybe I can't handle this job. Maybe, like, Wow. There's just that self-doubt. So the mental game yeah. was, you know what? No. <laughs> All that's nonsense. I'm going to do what I got to do to succeed at this. So I I, I called well, it. Well, do you think that there's a turning point like that in that instant? Because look. There's decision, I think there's that, decision points, right? Yes. And it's and I think there's the, probably one of the biggest ones that you can make. And if you can consistently do this, you'll be in a great spot like you just did because – that phone call can be crushing. It was. Right? And I know a lot of people that would just be like, all right, screw it then, you know, in, in not so many words, you know, screw this, I'm out of here. And they would just bounce. Like, who cares? I don't need this in my life. Because you don't, you don't, you don't need that in your life. You don't need people talking to you like that. You don't need any of that. But then there's another uh, subset of folks who are like, you know what? Screw this lady. I'm actually coming for her job now. If she thinks, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's it, all of a sudden it's personal, right? And you're like, you know, this trouble ticket is not going to define my life. <laughs> and it's right? interesting you say that because I'll get vulnerable, vulnerable with you for a second and real. A woman telling me, figure yeah. it out or I don't belong here and hanging up on me. Yeah. Kind of triggered a neural pathway in my head yeah. of, you know, my mom was a single working mother who... Oh, wow. It's okay. So I didn't have a hell of a lot of help or attention with things because she was working 12 hours a day. So like... And she probably told you the same stuff, right? Well, that's Figure what I'm out. getting at. Now, I love her to death yeah. and I'll give her a kidney. But you know, when I got sent home in sixth grade saying you're having problems with your multiplication tables, he needs help. I kind of remember getting scolded. Like... Like, figure it out, bro. Like, yeah. Right. So fast forward all these years later. So yes, like it, oh, wow. it was crushing... And if you think like everybody's had experiences throughout their life that has shaped them, mostly yeah. in childhood. Oh, and and a lot of times you don't know it either. No. Like it's crazy that you can actually pinpoint that because I would feel I've like I spent a lot I, of time working on myself. Yeah, same, same. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I don't know if I could do that, but I'd be totally lying because I do it like every week. Right. But, <laughs> but for an hour. Now at the time I didn't connect those dots, but yeah, yeah. When I called someone for help, I was new, I didn't know what I was doing, I called for help and got hung up on and was told, figure it out or you don't belong here. I had a stronger reaction <laughs> than maybe I should have or would have if blah, 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 blah. My life was different, whatever. So what I mean by handle that mental game is because as, as adults, like somebody says something to you and you flare up and you're ready to like rip somebody's throat out. If, yeah. It's not always what that person is saying. It's what they represent and what they're true. If you've been picked on your whole life and somebody tries to pick Dude. it as an adult, they're going to receive the fury of your entire childhood of getting picked on. Yo, right? I so just like, thought of our, I just thought of our <laughs> tag team name, by the way, since you were just going through that yeah. therapy, therapy boys. <laughs> like, because I was, I'm not kidding you. I was just talking about this. Like, so I, I, I love to bring up how like I get like super irritable over certain things. Me right. Too. And it was less about pinpointing those things, but this is the most profound thing anybody's ever said to me. Like, and it's so stupid because it's so fundamental, but it's exactly what you're talking about, right? And it's it's like, is it fair? So like the lady that you called and like, is it fair? I called my boss for help and she told me to go to hell. <laughs> exactly. I would have flipped out, right? Yeah. And I would have been, I'm fighting this lady, right? Yeah. So it, it like the reason I am like that though is because I, I'm uh, jumping to conclusions and that's an easy way to put it. But, but what I'm saying is that I am... I'm judging the situation only from my side. Like I always pretend that this is the scenario. I'm, you know, we've all seen trials before, right? There's, there's like two benches and then there's the judge, right? Like, and I'm, I'm in the, I'm on the defendant side. At least I always feel like I'm on the defendant and, and I'm like, nope, it's time to fight this guy. And the judge is like, okay. I always picture the scenario and the judge is like, okay, why? And you're like, well, did you not just hear what they said? And it's like, then the judge would say to me, do you think that's what they meant? Right. And I'm like, well, hell yeah, it's obviously what I think, but okay, let's ask them. Is that what you meant? Is that what you meant by that? Yeah. And nine times out of 10, that person's like, no, because I don't know how they're thinking. They don't know how I'm thinking. And I was, I've almost narrowed it down to every single time that it's me 
making something up, right? Like, yep. like some guy gives me a dirty look and I'm like, I got to fight this guy. Right. And for whatever reason, and it's, and it's not, I'm not saying it's because something happened to me in my childhood or whatever. Like, I mean, it did clearly, but it happened to all of us, man. Nobody it did, it did. But, it, you know. but I, I think this kind of goes back to something that I was talking about like a couple of months ago on here, which, which was like, you know, our days are filled with these like decision points. Right. And so for me lately, it's been less about like, how am I going to react to that? Like that lady calling you and telling you, Hey dude, you need to figure it out. Like it's less about me reacting to that and more so realizing that that's normally one of those situations where I go off the rails and I think about it. I'm not trying to fix anything. I'm not trying to jump in her shoes and, and, and feel what she's feeling. I'm not trying to get these crazy warm and fuzzies. What I'm trying to do is just, I'm trying to take myself out of the defendant seat and the plaintiff seat. And I'm trying to put myself in the judge's seat yeah. and I'm going to ask myself and that other person, the exact same questions. And I'm going to see what happens. Now, I'm not saying it's changed my behavior for the better or the good. What I mean is that I'm at least able to recognize when that's happening. Right. And that's enough for me right now. Right. Bringing it to a level of awareness is huge yeah. because otherwise you're just reacting to every person that pisses knowledge you of, off. Knowledge of self, knowledge of self. I don't know if there's any Wu-Tang, for you <laughs> right there, but you got to have knowledge of self. Yeah. Bring, bringing it to your awareness is huge. And then, and for me, that's been a lot of therapy. And then having Same. the ability to pause and think before you react. You won't do anything. Yeah, if you pause, you will stop most of it dead in its tracks, right. for sure. And for me, that comes from a lot of self-care stuff I do, namely meditation. Meditation Same. has slowed down my reaction time. Even if only by a second or two, before I jump across the counter, yep. I'm able Same. to pause and say, oh, just like you're saying, what I heard... <laughs> How Is I, it probably what they were thinking? How I yeah. interpreted it. You know, I have a lifetime of neural pathways. I mean, every experience we have creates neural pathways in our head. Yeah. And it's like a rut in the road. So when somebody says something to me, that yep. may fall into that rut that to me is a negative experience. And now I'm going to get them. But if I can yep. pause and say, well, is that really what they were like? And if you could put yourself in the other person's shoes, like when I'm driving, so like, and I don't know if it's from all those years of driving for Comcast, but if somebody cuts me off or they're nuts or... I honestly have developed the ability to be like, you know what? Maybe they just got a bad phone call. Maybe they're on their way to the hospital. Maybe they're having yeah, the worst day of their life. I, like, I, I know what you mean. Put yourself in their shoes instead of, look what he just did to the great me. I'm going to get him yep. and be pissed and yell and scream and honk the horn and all. So, yep, so yeah, it's, it's that pause. So, so, so I, right. But, but, you know. So anyway, there's an amount of that that comes with every job, right? Especially the entry level That's jobs. the mental yeah. game that I was... Yeah, which you so eloquently kind of got us there. So the the, yeah, the, the yeah. mental game is to, for me, it's to be able to suffer. Suffer is probably a too strong word, but to be able to suffer and to be able to continue on through it, to be able to, like courage is not the lack of push fear. Through, just, yeah, just courage is the lack through. of fear. It's moving through the fear. Even Everybody who's courageous is scared to death, but there's still... So anyway, that's the mental game part of it. The, the real answer to the question you asked is shadowing. So when I was a cable guy, the senior guy shadowed, I shadowed them. I watched what they did. And then the more I watched, the more they'd let me do stuff at their job. And then I start to grow confidence. So did you have guys then after that shadow you? Um, Like at the knock, I mean, in particular. Oh, at the knock. Yeah, well, right. So the cable guy was shadowing. The new guys. So the knock was the same thing. When I got there, I just okay. shadowed yeah. people. I think it was a week or Different two. Different people though. Right. So it was like a week or two on each shift. So you'd, okay. you'd sit in shadow for you know a week or two, and people just like Jeff, for instance. Jeff was working Jeff Clark that we had on for the Jeff. Okay, he was on the yeah. day shift, and he was a lead on day shift. So he would show me like what his day looked like, and here's what you do, and here's most of the calls that come in, cool. and here right, and here's the ticket thing, and here's how Spectrum works, and here. So it was a lot of shadowing. Um, There's a lot to take in though, right? A ton, like, a ton to take in, even in my job. Yeah, now, so how do you man like, how do you manage that though? How do you like okay? So you're shadowing somebody. That, this is what this is what's like so scary. I think about the first couple of weeks is like, you, you know, I, everybody's at any like, job, holy crap, at any job, at any job, yeah, yeah. Everybody's always like, holy shoot, don't don't throw me into the fire. I, I want to shadow somebody, but when you're shadowing someone, it's almost more difficult because you have to like follow their every move and be like, okay, well. But the thing is, going back to the art part you were talking about earlier. You know, I don't paint pictures the same way you paint pictures. I don't write songs the same way you write songs. But right. guess what? We both write songs, right? We both can draw pictures. So well, it's, your songs people it, want to listen to. 
It did at one point, you're, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, people show up, ladies and gentlemen. Your people ladies showed up at your shows. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a song is yeah, a song, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it, it, it gets the job done. <laughs> the, the point was to make a song, you make a song. So what I mean is like, okay, so the way Jeff was showing you and, you, and the idea of shadowing multiple people so you can get different perspectives, the problem yeah. is is it's an information dump, right. right? And you're writing furiously, like, I don't know what to do, this, that, that, and that. You just... You, this goes back to what you said about the mental part, man. I think you 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 got to just take it one piece at a time. Know your limits and know that know this too that even if you're in the bottom 50% of of all the people on this planet, I don't know who who thinks that about themselves, but hey, at least half of us are in it. So <laughs> like I mean the most, math checks out, yeah, right? Most people are yeah. statistically. Right? Yeah, right. What the hell? So so if if you feel like you're one of those people and you feel that I'm in a room full of everybody in the 95th percentile and I'm in the 10th percentile, yeah. then... And that's always how it feels. Yeah, that's always how it feels. It's not true. So, it's not true at all. <laughs> so then, game. you know what? <laughs> work, it, work at your own pace. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, know what works for you. Use the same techniques you did for everything else. Like, okay, I had a job at McDonald's, right? Mm-hmm. I ended up being like the one kid in there that could work the drive through the front line, the grill, right. you know the lob, whatever, yeah. whatever they wanted me to do. But I did that on purpose because I wanted to know everything. Right. And so I was never, I never felt like I didn't know what I was doing because I hate that feeling. Sure. And so what I'm saying is like, it didn't, I, that didn't happen overnight. Right. I, and what I would do like subsequent to that jobs after that, you know, that's like my first job. One of my first jobs after that, like, okay, I'm a cable guy now. I'm like, Hey dude, you know, I could figure the drop part out and I know that that'll alleviate 85% of my problems. It when in doubt, Dr- switch the drop right yeah. so I, I change the drop and then if i can't start figuring i take things one at a time you know i don't know how to do that yet all right let me work on that right. okay i don't know how to do that yet I, I can't just sit there like like we both did in the three months of, of cable tech school and read a book three of these books that were like this thick like ah they had no business being that big you know there, and and <laughs> we're trying to, we're trying to soak up all i mean look look at your ccmp book uh, back there it's like it pales in comparison to that you know by, what I mean? by the way all those comcast university books that i had and there was a lot of them i had them all behind my driver's seat in my van thinking that someday I would like need them to like reference, they, reference they sat it there yeah. for five years on open. Cause I'm like, you're like, how far am I someday? supposed to space uh, <laughs> cable clips on the outside of a house that has wood siding? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like, like the TQA guy was going to come around and be like, Oh, that's five and a half inches, dude. Sorry. The bend radius is off. Yeah. Um, you know, you eventually got to get thrown to the fire and that's the unfortunate part. And I'll even tell you in my job now, yeah. which recently changed, you know, I've spent, and this past year has kind of been a bad example because things were so nuts uh, at home with COVID and all that crap in the kids' home. But I spent a lot of time trying to learn all these different technologies I'm being thrown in and, and study them. And, and But it's all too much and it's all overwhelming. The best thing that happens to me now is I get assigned a specific thing to do in this thing, and then I got to figure it out. Then it's like, all right, let me jump in here, see how this works. Like I... Once I become responsible, it's it's kind of like what happened with automation with me lately. It worked. They were like, "Dude, automate or leave." Not as str- <laughs> not, not as strong as that, but I can read. Be- it's like RoboCop. I can read between automate the lines. punk. <laughs> yeah. I can read between the lines. Like you know, I don't know how long gonna be here, bro. If you're not automating, so I I've been through all the classes. I watched all the videos, but two weeks ago, I was like, you know what? I'm just digging my claws into Ansible, and my head's going to be down. I'm not doing anything else until I get this some bitch working. And yeah. today, I finally pulled in people, and we spent a couple hours, and I, and I finally got it working. But if I didn't make that decision, or if something didn't get assigned to me, if if my, if my the company I work at was more soft, and like, ah, we'll get there when we get there. And there was a sense of urgency, you know, like, dude, automate or die. So I'm like, all right, bro, today's the day. I'm going to do this until... So for me, I got to be thrown into the fire, you break it down, you break the elephant down into smaller parts. When I went to that house and they had 27 phone lines and a 66 block and I'm like melding down, the guy that I was shouting was like, listen, man, it's all- just take a one at a time. All, what do they call it? Ring and a pair? I don't even remember anymore. Ring and a t- yeah, tip, tip and a, and a ring. ring yeah. Yeah. It's all just, yeah. every phone line is just a tip and a ring. It's just two yep. wires and, and just do, yep. do one at a time. And that helped me. You, know, you got to get thrown in the fire eventually. You, it's analysis paralysis. You can always study- you can only study for the exam so long. You got to get your ass in the seat, take the test, and you know maybe fail. You got it. Yeah. I was thinking like what what you were saying there too, especially because you know the people that were that 
were potentially going to help you anyway. Like you, you mentioned like the imposter syndrome. Okay. So you will never have more imposter syndrome than day one on the job because it's for some strange reason. It's like this human instinct to just think that everybody, you're like the stupidest person there, like for whatever reason. And, but it's ridiculous. I guess maybe it's a lie. It is. It's a lie. But I would say, I would say this though, make it your mission then to prove yourself right. Prove, prove, prove yourself right in, in that. What I mean is that, that that you are an imposter. Prove yourself right. <laughs> go go to every person and try to prove yourself right. Look for proof. Find right? out. Like th- yeah, that's, find find what they know that you don't know. Right. Like that's some CBT trick. What proof do you have that you don't belong here? And I had somebody tell me that. Like okay, so they brought you in. You had the credentials to get you an interview. They brought you into yeah. the interview. You interviewed yep. regular yep. psych and technical. They offered yep. you the job. Do you think that none of these people have any idea what they're doing? And it was a great mistake that you're here. Somebody like really right. broke it down like that. And I was like, yeah, that's actually a good point. Okay. Maybe like you proved it, right? Yeah. yeah like yeah. you're surrounded. All these people in charge, they're all dumb. And they all made a huge mistake bringing you in. Like, is that really what you believe? And when it was told that's to me like that. That's pretty cool. I was yeah, like, yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I yeah. And, and the reason why I'm even saying is like, because I just thought about this while you were talking about it is like, like, okay. If that's really the way you feel, then I I implore you to validate it. Go find because okay, so worst case scenario, you do validate it and you validate it and realize that you're the stupidest person there and you're and you're just the dumbest person on planet Earth. But that whole time you were validating it, figuring out why that person was smarter than you, you found out what made them smarter and you now know. And you can now use that, right? And if you do that from everybody, you turn into like Thanos, right? And then you have like all the freaking jewels and stuff and you're like, yeah, let's go. And, and so like, you're like some, you're like forming like Voltron, right? And and it, I, I, maybe it's just a different way of looking at it, I guess. But I like, I like yours too. I think that's a good one, especially because like the whole idea here is like just kind of getting an idea of the, of the knock and maybe like not necessarily that every knock is exactly the same because they are not. But right. um, the idea is that, the situation is similar and you have knock experience. So I thought it would be super helpful. And I hope it has been for everybody out there to kind of just get a general idea. And, and I don't think it's specific to the knock either. Like we, we were talking about it because I think it's a good topic. Cause I think it's a, a job that we do. We, we talk a lot about it. I feel like, but we don't talk about like what it is, you know, yeah, like what it's what, like sitting in that like, chair. Or what it's yeah. Like, like the what the ingredients week. are. Yeah. We talk about the pizza all the time. We just don't talk about the ingredients. And so like, I think I think it was a important thing, and and if everybody anybody has any other ideas of stuff that you know we want to you want us to talk about, like I know we talked to, we were kicking around the idea of like network horror stories and things like that, which you know AJ's got more of those in the past like thirty <laughs> days I think than all of us do in a lifetime, and I, Dan does too. He's got a couple too. Yeah, he does. I uh, I have a closing thought before we sign off. Yeah, which let's is do it. tied into all this. So yeah, if you're reaching beyond your comfort level you're always setting yourself up to feel like an imposter. And, always. Right. So that's it's a good thing to reach and want to be better. That's that's evolution. I mean, that's how we crawled out of the swamps or, you know. So, yeah. and I heard it. I don't know if I heard it once or I'd love to say I made it up, but I probably didn't. But I, oh, we, we can give you credit here because <laughs> well, I'm not going to Google it. A, a so line that ahead. always sticks out to me is there's no comfort in evolution. You know what I mean? The, yeah. the gazelle who walks across that, you know, Serengeti and the alligator comes out and takes his hoof off, but he gets away. He's going to pass that, you know, genetic information onto his yeah, like don't kids. Do that. Like, right. yo, bro, not a good idea. I made it. And the guy who doesn't make it through the swamp that gets eaten, well, he doesn't get to pass on his genetic code. Evolution's a thing. It exists. So yep. you have to be, if you want to grow, you're going to be uncomfortable. So my key has been the mental game. How can you be uncomfortable and still is it evolve. is it fair to say is it fair to say that you need to just be chasing uncomfortability uncomfortableness i, I can yes i can tell you that the more uncomfortable i become in my life the bigger my life gets the more it grows and the more rewards i get from that mm. uncomfortableness it'd be very easy for me to have stayed in a very easy job a long time ago and be yep. very comfortable and not yep. have, you know, I had to ask my wife out on a date. I was terrified. She's 5'11". She's hot. She had her act together. And and Wait, how tall are you? 5'10". So you can dunk on you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, she's, you know, what, what, what can I say? <laughs> so 
I'm saying that like that. one of the most scariest moments I had was asking her out. It was, we just met on the street. It was blind. She didn't know me. We weren't set up. Like it was a coffee shop. And Nobody. now look at you. The more uncomfortable I get in my life, you know what I mean? Cable guy, Knox, he's saying a CCMP podcast, whatever, whatever. Um, you know, asking her out. The more I get out of my comfort zone and the more I say, okay, this might be uncomfortable and suck and make me anxious or feel like an imposter. But if I can just do everything you just said in this episode and employ all those tools and prove myself right or wrong, I am, I'm not, whatever, life just keeps getting better and greater and, and more and more cool stuff coming in. So is it, comfort is, is not safe the name say, of the game, in my opinion. If you, no, if so you is it safe to life. say this then? Yeah. Is it safe to say, like, just to like put a bow oh, here on comes what the bow. you just said? Here, I love the, the Aaron bow. <laughs> the bow. Because, no, I, th I think I think what you meant to say is, is, is this, is... No, I think you meant to say what you said, but what, Go ahead. what I think, what I, what I would have said, I guess is the best way to put it is like, is all of the stuff that you have that's worth having came from something uncomfortable. All of it. Like not a, like you can't name a single thing Nothing. that you didn't do that, that you have right now that came because like, okay, I, I always get mad. Like I'll see like kids get like their first car. Just going to say like that. They get their if, first house. Unless you're a trust fund you know? baby. And that's probably less than half of 1%. Unless you're born into money. And everything just gets thrown at you and, you know. It's bad for you. Well, I, you know, I can only talk from my experience. I, same, I'd be yeah. fine growing up rich, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah, same. I'm, yeah. But yes, uh, to answer your question, it's it's an emphatic yes. And the more uncomfortable emphatic I yes. get, the better my life gets. And it's, it's definitely worth it. But you got to play that mental game and you got to get your head straight and you got to be able to be uncomfortable and not have a panic attack or not have to get drunk every time it happens or not, you know, run out of the room when you're at a technical interview failing miserably. And then you get the job. Both of my technical interviews, I failed. And they were anxiety fests and I couldn't breathe and I couldn't see half the time. It was awful. <laughs> Yeah, and I got both jobs, and look at me now. <laughs> like, and they, you know. and they knew it. So I think I think the theme here is that, you know, we we gave you some insight on what the knock looks like for one, and maybe some other jobs as well. But it's always the same footprint. It's always the same blueprint. It's always the same scenario. It's just, you know, I always say same room, different view. Secret sauce, right? Like it's secret sauce. It's it's, it's yeah, it's secret sauce. It's like no matter what job you're going to. It's always new. You every single time the the most consistent thing you have about your work life should be that every time you do something it's completely new, right? And that means that you're just learning more and more and more and then you forget more and more and more and learn new stuff, right? And you you're kind of rolling with the punches and you don't get stuck and all this cool and stuff. And in general happens. there's so, more responsibility and more money with the more and more stuff. More money, yeah. The, yeah, the more <laughs> uncomfortable you get, the more money you'll get too. Remember that. Ooh, yeah. What is that? You like, I was making it rain. Is it, are you making it rain? <laughs> I was trying to. I'm probably doing it wrong. <laughs> These are euros too, so they're worth more, you know. Uh, <laughs> the British pound. Well, I really enjoyed getting interviewed Quid. by you. It's been a while. You're very good at this. I think you should have a TV uh, no. show. Oh, wait. We're on YouTube. I think we I have a TV show. Yeah, look at us, Ma. <laughs> no, I and I'm all decked out in Padres gear today because it's opening day. The first game was back in the stadiums today, so that's a momentous occasion. Did they win? The Padres. They did. Rock we won on, eight to brother. seven. Beautiful. Yeah, it was, it was a good game. You're close to the stadium um, there, yeah? Yeah, I'm about 30 feet away, wow. so I get I get everything. No, it sucks can because I watch game, it on like, TV. From where you're at, like, can you see? In no, because the... I'm on the bottom floor, okay. uh, so I just hear everything. So I hear the stadium, and then the time delay on the yeah, TV it's weird, is right? awful. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. It's a full pitch behind. A full pitch. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. That's a 256 anyway, qualm, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, buddy. No. Let's speed of light coming at you. <laughs> so, all right, everybody, thank you for listening. I know we've been talking to you guys zero off for a long time. We appreciate it. But I think the moral of the story here is get uncomfortable. There is no imposter syndrome. Um, prove yourself right. Don't prove yourself wrong. Prove yourself right. Pro go, set out on a mission to make sure that everybody in there is smarter than you. And then report back with your findings. Um, and as, as always, please like, subscribe, comment, do all that jazz. If you haven't already, sign up for all of your favorite uh, podcasting, like the Podcatcher and you know wherever uh, wherever podcasts are sold. Like us there, subscribe so that you'll get this fresh, nice new episode every Wednesday morning on the dot. Depending on what part of the country you're in, you can probably listen to it on your way back to work. We're all getting back into the offices now, so maybe traveling a little bit. If you just found us, guess what? You got a ton of cool episodes to listen to. Congratulations. Go you. You just upgraded your life, and that's actually not uncomfortable. This is comfortable. This is very comfortable. Yeah. So listen away. Get comfortable, baby. We're here all night. 
uh thanks for <laughs> thanks for listening to uh the uh the therapist twins <laughs> see ya Hey everyone, this is AJ. If you like what you heard today, then make sure you subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcatcher. Smash that bell icon to get notified of all of our future episodes. Also, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We are at Art of Net Eng. That's Art of N E T E N G. You can also find us on the web at Art of Network Engineering.com, where we post all of our show notes. You can read blog articles from the co hosts and guests and also a lot more news and info from the networking world. Thanks for listening.